Ignore when I say this is FF episode 1127. It's 1128. Just to correct that. Thank you. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF 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 Zode 1128. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster. Plus, we bring you the fascinating news segment called Fascinating Material Project. Mike's Daily Podcast. And there's a bunch of stuff in the news. None of it I have looked at yet. Mike's Daily Podcast. Oh, it looks like another person won't go to the Olympics. But this is something that has to do with her antics with doping, doping appeal. I'm talking about Maria Sharapova. She's blonde and hubba hubba hubba. I had to throw that in there, the lyrics. Mike's Daily Podcast. And she, it's not because of the Zika virus. Shaka, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan has entered drug rehab. Mike's. We wish her luck. Daily. Because she's Shaka Khan. Podcast. Shaka Khan. Khan. Yeah. That's what I meant. Uh, so Black Lives Matter is racist, according to Rudy Giuliani. What the? How does he? I don't quite. He. He. Okay. Rudy Giuliani said has said so many things that have irked me over his career. He seems like a bright, intelligent guy, but man, he has some weird backwards. And then Bernie Sanders is going to stump for Hillary Clinton uh, to, uh, today, tomorrow. I think tomorrow is the big day, so Tuesday. But that should be interesting. That, there'll be lots of attention paid to that. I usually produce Rob Black's show in the morning. Today he had to be pre-recorded. Due to things going on, which helped me out because we're having all kinds of computer issues at my work today. And one of the things he mentioned was how, when the oil industry started doing really well here in America, you know, like the oil fields of the Dakotas and Alaska, uh, the stripping economy, strippers, not not stripping the land and, and fracking and everything, no, the strippers, their industry shot up because so many uh, strippers were finding lots of um, clientele in those particular areas. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How are you doing? It's a disgruntled fiddle player. Tell you what. What? Stripping is an abomination. Unless my wife does it. Does she uh, strip for you often? Well, you know, it's kind of a thing where... We have, uh, oh, Mike had to go away for a second. Oh, my, some more computer issues. Okay. Had to run out of cafe anyway and get something. But look who came in as I walked back in. Hello, Mike. Can I make the root beer? I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Hey, brewmaster. Did you live in your, you live in your root beer vat? Yeah, I live in there. And there's really no other character development with you? No, 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 no. Root beer is delicious. That's about it. Okay. Well... That's uh, all the stuff you can find at the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. If you want to see pictures of all the Cafe Anyway characters, if you want to see past podcast pictures. Oh, speaking of which. And here's today's podcast picture. On Saturday, I took my dog, Basil the Boxer, for a walk at Fairmont Ridge, again, in Podcaster Valley. And there was this beautiful little moment with the trees and the sun had just sort of set. And there was the twilight, the dusk. And the moon. You can see that at mikesdailypodcast.com. Also, that day, I had walked my dog a little bit earlier in the day. Ah! Walking. Some people don't like to do it. I like it. It's my exercise of choice. And interesting things happen, like when you're walking your dog, and all of a sudden he jumps towards a cat on someone's front lawn, and the cat says, no heck way expletive way I'm going to retaliate and does all this thwacking with its paws came after Basil luckily didn't go after Basil's eyes scratched him a little bit like on the lip he was bleeding for a half a second and then he stopped thankfully I 
dabbed it off with a little napkin. And then the cat sat there with all like, you know, looking like the cat on the back of the witch's broom with its hair all standing up. Wow, that was an exciting moment. But uh, the two looked at each other for a moment, reconciled, and we moved on. There was also just a few doors down, someone with a big Tejano group performing in their backyard on Saturday evening. That was a fun evening. Saturday was just an amazing day. I talked a little bit about it with the... uh, You had the Castro Valley Pride on one side of the street, and on the other side of the street is the Redwood Chapel, Redwood Church, and they were putting on their car show. It was the most festive day Castro Valley has, and I was thinking about it a year ago. No, two years ago, I was dating this girl who was pretty conservative and religious, and she did not want to um, go to the Castro Valley Pride for certain reasons that you would know. And I had a great time. Basil had a great time at Castro Valley Pride because even though we got there before it really started, but there were a lot of nice people there that were all petting Basil, and he really enjoyed that. In fact, he was trying to pull me back there later on, but the festival had ended. But everybody was scratching Basil. Oh, what a great dog. A lot of dog lovers at Castro Valley Pride. Pet lovers. You know what? Basil enjoyed it. We didn't get any beads. One year we went to Castro Valley Pride and Basil left with all these beads, these colorful beads, like he had gone to Mardi Gras. All right. So Mike'sDailyPodcast.com is where you can see the podcast picture, past podcast pictures. Uh, here are past interviews that I've done with interesting bands and people. And then there's also the um, web, the what, 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 what? Click on that Amazon link. And buy whatever it is you're going to buy on Amazon through that link at mikesdailypodcast.com. That helps out the show. Also, if you want to help through the PayPal, uh, donate there. You'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. That's all there at mikesdailypodcast.com. And now, fascinating material project. The Fascinating Material Project. Project. The FM Project. The FM Project. The FM Project. So, on Friday, I was sneezing my head off. Allergy season is still uh, with us. When nature is in full force, releasing pollen and allergens on the wind, our bodies will overreact, producing more than 100,000 or 100 substances to counteract allergens. Yes, this according to the Castro Valley Forum. The, these uh, substances to counteract allergens include the big gun, histamine which can unleash some unexpected seasonal allergy symptoms. Allergic patients can experience fatigue, headaches, stomach trouble, and difficulty sleeping. It's your immune system trying to protect you, but for many, it's self-preservation gone too far. Fatigue can come from the overload of histamine and a number of other substances released in your body. These substances can, can, can disrupt normal sleep cycles. And patients who have nasal allergy symptoms also have trouble breathing at night. Some may even develop seasonal sleep apnea, struggling to take in enough air. Headaches, from dull aches to migraines, can also ramp up during allergy season. A buildup of mucus can accumulate in the sinuses, which are already swollen from the effects of histamine. Sinus passages are very small. Once they swell a bit, the mucus can't escape, and the pressure can cause your head to hurt, thus the headaches. Clogged sinuses are also a breeding ground for bacteria, making patients vulnerable to sinus infections. So, what can you do? Avoid the allergens. Avoid the outdoors, especially on windy days. Which is great for all you people that like to play video games 24-7. Like a lot of millennials that I know. If you must mow your own lawn or do your yard work, do it in the morning when things are still damp. At home, consider running the AC system instead of opening windows so that the air is filtered. And you can use up all the electricity in the world and... Uh, cause the coal plants to work harder to release more uh, pollution into the air. If your program, uh, problems are severe, consider an allergy vacation. Being in another location can help the body to settle down from its allergic overreaction. Also, wash your bed pillows monthly or purchase allergy covers. You spend up to nine hours of your day with your face on a pillow. 
that may be holding onto allergens. I wish I was spending nine hours of my day there. Uh, move your allergens out of your body. Clean the nasal passages with saline solution morning and night. Eh, I don't agree with that. Saline solution, aerosol sprays, maybe more. Uh, by uh, might be more genic than squeeze bottles, which can pull back secretions and become their own breeding ground for problems. That's true. Keep your saline nasal spray with you and use it if you have a sudden onset of symptoms. It can wash out allergens that you just encountered before they can do any more da- damage. I think some people use them too much and it causes the your body to not be able to uh, counteract and protect yourself against the allergens. But what do I know? And then they also say honey's good. If you get locally grown uh, produced honey, because those bees carry a lot of the stuff that you're allergic to, the pollen and whatnot, and it helps you develop a defense in your body. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Next show, it will be Madame Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. I got to get back to work. There's all kinds of things. It's like total chaos here at work. But I'm outside a cafe anyway. I know I've confused you. I gotta go. Bye, Benita. Bye, my girl. Bye, everybody. Mike's TV podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.